In this example, I'd look to, like to look at the instability of a rigid rod of length L that's acted on by an axial force P, and it's supported by two springs with spring constants K. So in this system here, I apply a vertical load, and the bar can simply stay straight up or down, or it can also undergo a type of lateral rotational instability where, for instance, the cart can translate over to the side, say an amount delta, and the bar itself can also undergo a rotation, let's say theta. So this is a, a two degree of freedom system, and in this case the springs will extend an appropriate amount. And so what I'd like to do is look at determining the load P at which this instability will occur. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll write down a potential energy for the system in the deflected shape, so it's a function of the rotation and the translation of the system. And if we have both the rotation and translation, we're going to store elastic energy in the two springs. At the lower spring, we'll have one half k times delta squared. And then the stored energy in the upper spring will be one half k times the extension of the upper spring, which is going to be delta plus l times theta. And then we'll have the quantity squared. And then we need the potential of the load, which is going to be to second order will be p one half l theta squared. So that's the amount that the load point will drop if there is any motion in the system. So the translation delta doesn't give any drop to the load, but with a rotation, the upper load point will drop to second order to this amount. So from here we can look at the equilibrium equations, and then we'll look for values of p that will allow for instability. So the derivative with respect to delta gives me k delta plus k delta plus l theta. So that's my first equilibrium equation. And the derivative with respect to theta will give me my second equilibrium equation. So that's going to be k times l times delta plus l theta. So using the chain rule differentiation minus p l theta equals zero. So those are my equilibrium equations, and we can write them in sort of a matrix form here. So it'll be 2k, kl, kl, kl squared minus pl times delta theta is equal to 0, 0. So I have a system of homogeneous equations, and I'd like to determine the load value p at which I can have a non-trivial solution. So the trivial solution is always a solution for any value of p. So trivial meaning delta equals 0, theta equals 0. But if I want for a non-trivial solution, then I want the determinant of this matrix here to be equal to 0. So the determinant of that matrix is going to be equal to 2k kl squared minus pl minus kl quantity squared. And I want to set that equal to 0 for a non-trivial solution. So this is a linear equation in P, which I can solve. And so this tells me that P is equal to KL over 2. So this turns out to be, that's my critical load. That's the load at which I can have a non-trivial solution. And I can plug this load back into these equations if I'd like to determine the form of the solution. So in other words, determine the eigenvector. at p is equal to kl over 2. And I can use either equation. I can use the first equation or the second equation. So let's just go ahead and use the first one since it's simpler. It actually doesn't depend on p. So I'll have 2k delta plus kl theta equals 0. And so I'll find out that delta is equal to minus l over 2 theta. So if I were to draw the system in its deflected shape, it's telling me that the motion and the rotation are opposite of each other. So if I were to, let's, let's draw the system in its starting shape. So we have the cart right there. And so what the solution is telling me is that if I have a forward motion of the cart, 
by an amount delta, it's telling me that the bar itself will have an opposite angle rotation here. So there, there's theta there. And so, and then the relationship between these two values is given to me by this relationship here. So if I have the spring extending in this direction, the other spring will contract a little bit here. And so that's my solution for the instability of this one degree. Actually, it's a two degree of freedom system here. So this should be a two degree freedom system.